Moments before kickoff and inside the Seoul locker room at the Wells Fargo Center, where the Seoul had won 17 straight times. We don't have to do anything special. I don't need one hero. I need, I need 21 warriors to go war. Dang right, okay? Yeah. Remember one thing, we don't lose at home. Hell yeah, no. We're undefeated for a reason. The Jacksonville Sharks had other ideas. Well, we changed up from what we did all year. Uh, we know Coach Gonzalez is a great offensive coordinator and head coach, so we didn't want to show him exactly everything we've done all year. The Shark defenders would challenge the sole receivers at the line of scrimmage and disrupt their routes, and the timing of the league-likely MVP, quarterback Dan Radabaugh. Anytime you get routed by any open shots at a receiver, he's going to hit him. I mean, he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks, one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the league, and we have much respect for him. Terrence Smith, one of the league's most electrifying all-around performers. And the Sharks' defensive backs would change the game in the very first quarter with an interception and several other near takeaways. You might have picked four balls off oh in that first God. half alone. I know. Yeah. I just have to keep going, man. I, I thank God for where I'm at. Uh, I, you know, I'm very blessed to be here. I'm very blessed for, to play for a, a great organization like Jacksonville. Ronald Ball would gather himself and appeared ready to draw even with Sean Kailinamuko heading for the end zone. A fumble. Sharks quarterback Tom Grady would take over and take advantage of the turnover to establish a two-score Jacksonville lead. It might have been more, but for Grady's one mistake, a first and goal lob that was easily intercepted by Larico Stevenson. You know, I gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep your focus in these big games, and I lost my focus for a second and uh, threw that bad interception, but you know, try, to, try to stay even keel and uh, you know, stay, stay, uh, stay uh, in the game, and uh, we, we made plays in the game, though, to win it. Grady was near perfect after that. And the Sharks' defense held at the end of the first half. The soul went into their locker room, down by two scores. And you can't have any more bad things happen to you that just just happened, okay? And we're down 14, about to get the ball. Get your heads up, lock in, and do your job. Out of the break, the soul receivers start to break free. Rodaball finds Marco Thomas for the second of his five touchdowns. Well, Rodaball, I got to give all hats off to him. Great quarterback. Uh, actually, he might be the most quarterback I picked up the least in the league. Uh, he's hard, hard guy to, you know, to stop. He gets the ball out really fast. And uh, I just try to read his eyes best I can and watch a lot of film on him. But uh, I got to give much respect to him. He's a great guy. And then the sole defense finally gets it going. Bo Bell gets to the six foot seven quarterback. Grady goes to the ground. But the quarterback got up and found Joe Hills again and again in the end zone. I, I am the, you know, probably one of the best receivers in the red zone, you know, that the league has to offer. So, I mean, that's where I, that's where, that's where I thrive at, um, and that's what I do. Ronaldball was on track now and began trading touchdowns with Grady like two heavyweight punchers. This one thanks to a great diving catch by Ryan McDaniel in the fourth quarter. He got in the rhythm, and, you know, good players going to get in the rhythm, and Dan did a great job. The tall, strong Joe Hills was able to maneuver his body inside the tight spaces of the Arena League end zones. This time, another of his five touchdowns, providing a seemingly comfortable pad of 12 points with little more than a minute to go. Joe, Joe's a big target, and he's, uh, you know, once you get in the red zone, he's a little easier to, a little easier, easier to find. And, uh, you know, he's making plays down there, and Tiger was making plays out of the field, and that's kind of how we've been all year. Dan Rodaball kept fighting, and he found Marco Thomas, who snaked into the end zone to pull the Sol within five, under a minute to go. Inside the Sol 20, with under a minute left, it was first down for Jacksonville. But the Sharks go to the air, curiously. Three passes, all fall incomplete, using very little clock, and forcing a 29-yard field goal try that may or may not have been good by kicker Julian Rauch. After much debate and review, it was ruled wide right, and the chance for a miracle sole win at the wire was wide open. Philly has a great offense, man. We we kind of thought that they were going to go down and uh, punch it in on us, but uh, defense held strong, and uh, that's that's what those guys do. Jackson, Smith, and the Shark defenders defended the deep end zone, while the Soul took little steps towards the goal line. I was surprised 
at what the plays they was running to get where they did. But once they got there, I noticed what they did. It was at the 15 yard line real quick, and you got anything you want to run, and we couldn't sit back on them. And uh, you know, guys just made some plays. Two seconds left. The soul finally throw for the end zone, and Jacksonville's third interception sends them to the Arena Bowl 28. Philadelphia was a high class team and high class organization, and you know we just appreciate our spot right now. From Philadelphia, Lou Tilly for the AFL.